Hi, I'm Serena Hussain. Welcome back to Life Vocabulary, the place for creative and cultural commentary and conversations with the podcast, reviews and interviews. And this is going to be a reaction of Summer Durant, who is a poet. And this work was just released on Button Poetry's YouTube page. So shout out to Button Poetry. I literally just watched this 12 to something well 12 hours ago and uh, I wanted to add something to the conversation or create a conversation around it rather so this is a poet called Summer Durant the piece is called Future Not Fetish a little bit about Summer I have looked into her a tiny bit but I can't seem to find all her socials so if you know Summer um, or if you are Summer bravo firstly but also please do get in touch with your social so I can add links to you and to your work of course so a little bit of background about Summer she is of Jamaican and Indian heritage she I believe is still at Georgetown University she's American and um, it's a really great piece she starts off singing the lyrics to Trey songs cop that foreign and if you don't know what that song's really about he's essentially talking about foreign women and copying them meaning having them obtaining that ass if you don't mind me being so so crude but um essentially what she's talking about is well it says future not fetish so let's get straight into it same old thing yeah you know that shit boring American, you know I had to cop that foreign. American, you know I had to cop that foreign. American, you know I had to cop that foreign. I don't see myself that way. I see myself as red, white, and blue as the people who tell me to go back to my country. When I never left in the first place, when the subcontinent my forehead has written on it is as foreign to me as I am to them. I see myself as an American-born U.S. citizen, so it is hard. It is hard, and it's really interesting because a lot of us who were born here, uh, we grew up with our relatives and other family members who didn't grow up here. Let's just say, for instance, I'm from Pakistan, the Punjab, and <clears throat> you'd have cousins saying, yeah, but you're not really Pakistani or whatever, and I know... Indian and Bangladeshi and other friends that I have who are from there and born here, uh, whether they're America or the UK, they say the same thing. You're kind of treated a little bit like, okay, you're not really us, but then when we're here, we're not really here. So it's a really interesting insight. So it's not necessarily just being treated as other over here. You can be treated other by your own. I'm doing quote marks. Actually, this isn't the podcast, it's the video, so you can see my inverted comments. Okay. To recognize that I am the fetishized, exoticized version of the girl he will probably marry. I am the Muckney Curry redaction of the beauty standard his parents want, but would never arrange for him. I am the groceries he got from the ethnic supermarket his friend sold him to try out sometime. I am the spice he needed to add a little flavor to his life, a little bite to his bed. So we're getting straight into it. We're getting straight into the kind of fetishization of people. And uh, women are to blame as well. I'm sure we all have a type and I question my type all the time. My types, if you like, my preferences. We all have preferences, but she's talking about being fetishized as a brown, black, exotic spice even and uh it's interesting and it's 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 a discussion and debate that takes place a lot when we are talking about our preferences and should we question our preferences and I absolutely believe that we should because sometimes we aren't just going by our sexual preferences we're going by 
an experience of someone that looks a certain way and behaves a certain way and we're attached to that behavior. That's interesting. That's that's uh, also part of this conversation when we're coming to our attachments to attracting, so our attachments to certain kind of personality types. And those personality types we then believe come in a certain package, which isn't true, but you can end up attracting that cliche Or um, you could be objectifying a type sexually and that's what she's essentially saying and sharing about her experience of being um, seen in a certain way from an arranged marriage perspective and then from another perspective. Let's carry on. Our babies would be plagued with my full body brown birthmark blemish. They would be covered from head to toe in my pigment, my phenotype all over them. Their grandparents left wondering... God, why are those black genes so dominant? They were recessive 200 years ago. And then I think, maybe I'm just blowing this all out of proportion. Maybe he really does love me for me. Perhaps he thinks I'm funny and witty, clever and charming and adorable. I am pretty adorable. She is. Maybe he adores me and my skin color is just an accessory. Perhaps he's willing to give up on his junior to raise a mama's boy by skin tone, a chocolate and vanilla swirl heavy on the chocolate. Maybe he's not obsessed with the cocoa, maybe he's in love with it. <laughs> or, or maybe I'm the Asian porn tab he always has to clear from his history. Loving him makes me want to clear my history, makes me want to be all blonde and olive, all fair and rosy. So she says fair and rosy. When she started that bit, that sentence or whatever, I thought she was going to say fair and lovely. And uh, fair and lovely is the name of a brand of skin lightening cream that was made really popular, I believe, in the 80s in India, Pakistan and other places like that, where obviously with colorism being so rife and it's still being so, so relevant, relevant or just prevalent rather, Fair and Lovely is this brand of cream that women would use to lighten their skin. So I thought if she knew about that, but maybe it's because I'm a different generation. I believe she's in her very early 20s. So she may not be aware of it or perhaps she wasn't. It's just the writing process. It doesn't always come. But Fair and Lovely, I mean, it just made me think about that. I just thought it was really um, relevant to this. Let's carry on. I love him enough to want to be antithetical to everything that is myself to trade in this pigment for something that would blend better. I want to feel his fingers in my hair without thinking they're driven by the exoticism tattooed to his fingertips. I wanna listen to him call me beautiful without hearing unique. Mm. I wanna know that he loves me without having to wonder why. Mm. I want to be his future without being his fetish. There you go. That's Button Poetry, um, Future Not Fetish by Summer Duran. Um, I'm finding overwhelmingly there's so many really strong, relevant voices, diverse voices and opinions um, that are being heard through the form of spoken word, which is why I'm gravitating towards it so much. As you know, with the content that I do, um, I have interviewed uh, other spoken word um, artists, um, as well as those from music. And it's just so incredibly refreshing, and it most definitely does do the job of sharing real stories so others can relate and others can find someone else who is potentially speaking their reality so I think it's um, incredible to hear her perspective she has some other work as well where she's talking about her mixed heritage if you like in America you guys say biracial we say mixed race she is of Jamaican and Indian heritage as I said just a very um, again another interesting one if you would like to have your work featured let's say or reviewed then do get in touch all the links are provided so this was Summer Duran shout out to Button Poetry I I liked it I would really suggest you just watch that whole piece without the cuts 
um and uh, the links are provided for that for sure they are on facebook twitter instagram and tumblr as button poetry they're de- committed to developing a coherent and effective system of production distribution promotion and fundraising for spoken word and performance poetry they seek to showcase the power and diversity of voices in the community they encourage and broadcast the best and brightest performance poets of today and hope to broaden poetry's audience which I believe they definitely are with these kinds of voices and also hope to expand its reach and develop a greater level of cultural appreciation for the art form long may you continue thank you so much button poetry shout out summer duran again if you watch this if you know her if you are summer yourself bravo please do get in touch so i can provide all your links all summer durant's links get in touch guys dm me comment below subscribe see you